Um, what's one of the most important traits of an agile coach? Um, patience. Without doubt, patience. As you move away from working with individual teams, things take longer. So you're there working as a scrum master or an agile coach with one team. You spot an opportunity for improvement. You spot a coaching moment in there and you take that moment. You take hold of it. You, you help the team realise how to make use of that uh, improvement opportunity or you have the conversation in the moment and at the other end of it, action happens. Right? So while it's not as immediate as a developer, you're seeing feedback, you're seeing activity in days. Okay? I accept that sometimes we take an action out of the retro and it takes a few days to get started with it, but most teams will be trying to do that fairly soon in their sprint, in whatever approach they're taking because they want to maintain that momentum as a great agile coach as a great scrum master you've helped them have that identity of continuous improvement now when i look back that is slower that is slower than the developers as a developer i used to aim to commit code every 15 minutes or so um, and you would see did your tests pass did the pipeline accept your changes and if it didn't you got feedback um, one of my teams with a klaxon blaring, they everybody knew you just tried to break the build. Um, really rapid feedback. Multiple times inside an hour, you're being told whether or not you're on track. As a scrum master working with a team, as an agile coach working with that team, it's going to be measured in days instead of hours. But things change. As we move away from working with one team to a few teams, to small parts of the organisation, to large parts of the organisation, through programmes, portfolios, to whole organisational change. Each time, your feedback loop is going to slow down. And that is not really anything within your control. If you want to make a change in a single team, you need that team to agree. Yes, that sounds like a good change. Let's take that on board. If you want to take multiple teams through that change, You've got to get multiple teams to agree. Multiple teams have to take action and you need to wait for the results to compile them together to see whether as a larger unit things have improved or not. It just takes time. So one of the things we really need is patience because if you're working with one team it's in days. If you're working with a few teams it's probably in weeks. Much of my work today is done at the organisational level. We're talking months if not years to make changes. We're making decisions today and we're going to run through pilots and testing to make sure that we're not doing any harm to the organisation to make sure that we can run a whole organisation experiment. So we're running through all these small experiments, building confidence that it's good. One of the ones that comes to mind is an organisation that has radically transformed its HR performance processes. We started with a small part of the business. And we're talking a handful of teams and it seemed to work and it seemed to work really well but we needed to leave it running long enough to make sure that it was working well because we're talking about people's performance in their role not only are they doing a great job but do they progress under this new approach and when we had it working there we could move it to a larger part of the organization and say okay let's repeat it again and this again took time and more time because we're talking about more people, there's more variables in play, there's more possibilities that come into place. And only when we've done these pilots, expanding in size, could we run the organisational experiment that we originally envisaged probably three years prior. And it will take multiple years to truly know whether or not it was as successful as we thought. The first year it appeared to be successful. We certainly didn't damage any of the measures that we were looking at. Nothing went backwards. Not that we were looking at, but we've got to give it time to bed in. Do people like it because it's new or do they like it because it works? So it can take and it will take many years. Patience is really a critical factor. Some of the decisions you're going to make as an agile coach won't bear fruit today. They may not bear fruit tomorrow or next week or next month or maybe even next year. And if you're OK with that, life becomes good because what we know is we're trying things for the long term we're not after the fast fix we're not after 
a rapid improvement today for an even more dramatic collapse next week. What we want is small incremental improvements time and time again that compound together to make amazing changes, not only within the team, but within the organisations. One of the things when I think about this, and it did take an awful lot of patience on my part, was when I was first introducing concepts at a new client, coaching the team, and one of the conversations came up and putting my mentoring hat on for a second, I said, you know what would be really useful here? Something like BDD, behavior driven development, a way to collaborate closer with your stakeholders, with your customers, so that you're talking the same language and something that potentially we could tool up so that it works. It just works in the background. You know, you'll have the people who understand the problem deeply because it's their problem able to write in such a way that not only will the developers understand what the problem is, but actually you'll have the tests to check whether your solution solves their problem as articulated by them. I thought it was a fantastic idea. I laid it out to the team and I said, as I would tend to, go and have a read, go and have a play, go and have a think. You know, we can catch up in a week, two weeks time, whatever it was. And we caught up and they said, no, they get it? Not for us, won't work, won't solve the problem we're seeing. So, okay. I think it will, um, but take it to the team. The team disagrees, so eat a bit of humble pie and carry on. What was really interesting was it came back three, four months later, this conversation kicked off where another member of the team turned around and said, Do you remember that BDD concept we looked at? Would that help here? And the whole team immediately went, yeah, that would. The problem they were solving was exactly the same problem as four months prior. But it had taken that long for them to really internalize it and understand it and come to grips with it and see the value of that technique. Um, what I had to have through that process was confidence that they could get there. And part of being a coach is the belief that the people you work with are capable of solving the problems themselves in their own ways. So I needed that confidence, but I really needed the patience to not push and push and push because every time I did that, it would be an opportunity for them to build resistance and it would delay that point at which they would be ready to take that solution on board and give it a go. It worked really well. I'm taking none of the credit. That was entirely on the team. They made it work on their own terms. What I did was wait, it was propose a change. It was the wrong time for that team. Accept it. I was firm in my belief this would help them. It was a tool I could see directly. And what I had to do and what I knew I had to do was then wait. Give them time. They'll come to it or they won't. Doesn't really matter. They will make use of it as best they can. What we need to do as agile coaches, as scrum masters, as people who are involved and engaged in helping others succeed is place things out there and have patience to let them bear fruit. If you've got to this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, a like would be appreciated. If you want to hear more from me, more answers to questions that maybe you've got in the Agile world, please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question that you really want answered, drop it in the comments. I promise we'll get around to it. Thank you.